Okay, let's look at the works of Satan then. We know that Satan is the author of sin and he tempts uh, uh, all mankind to sin. Uh, that's in Matthew 4, uh, verse 1. But in uh, Matthew 4, verse 3, Satan is called the tempter, and throughout time he has succeeded in tempting mankind with the things of the world and leading them to indulge in immoral behavior. In the book of James, James tells us that man is drawn away and tempted of his own lust in James 1, uh, verse 14. In Paul's letter to the Corinthian church, we find that it is Satan who uses things in our life to tempt us. And that's in 1 Corinthians 7, verse 5. And when Jesus was in the wilderness, it was Satan who tempted him. And that's in Mark uh, uh, chapter 1, verses uh, 12 through 13. James tells us that the temptation can be endured in James uh, 1, verse 12. And God says that Christians will not be attempted above what they're able in, uh, to endure but he will make a way to escape. And that's in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13. Um, Satan uh, produces uh, sickness. Satan oppresses man mankind, as uh, shown in Acts uh, 10, verse 38. Satan causes individual sickness. Look at uh, Luke chapter 13, verse 16. Satan lays snares for men. Uh, Timothy tells us that Satan lays snares for mankind. That's in 2 Timothy 2, verse 26. Uh, Satan steals God's words out of the heart of mankind. So Matthew tells us that Satan works against God's plan by stealing God's word out of the hearts of mankind. And that's in Matthew 13, verse 19, and Luke 8, verse 12. And then uh, another work of Satan is that... Uh, he puts wicked purposes into hearts. Our hearts are deceitful, and Satan will use every opportunity to cause us to do evil. If we give room for Satan in our lives, he will use it to cause us to go against God's plan in Ephesians 4, verse 27. And Satan blinds the minds also. And it should come as no surprise that Satan works to blind the minds of mankind so they won't believe the gospel. And the God of this world refers to Satan. This is part of his work against God's plan. And it's in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 4. Satan harasses men. Because it would benefit Paul, God allowed Satan to harass Paul. Paul called it a thorn in the flesh. 2 Corinthians 12, verse 7. Uh, Satan takes advantage of mankind. So he is always on a, a lookout for a way to take advantage of mankind. Uh, according to 2 Corinthians 2, verse 11. And Satan accuses men before God. Uh, he does that day and night. However, he will one day be cast out of the presence of God, according to Revelation 12, verse 10. Uh, the Apostle John tells us that Satan enters into mankind. That's in John 13, verse 2. But uh, remember, he can only enter into uh, unbelievers, not believers. Um, it is Satan that placed false believers and teachers among the people. He sows the tares among God's people. Uh, Matthew 13, verses 38 through 39. Zechariah writes that Satan resisted uh, Joshua, the high priest. Uh, <clears throat> So, so we see that God resists God's servants. I mean, Satan resists God's service. In Zechariah 3, verse 1, and Daniel 10, verse 13, Satan hinders God's servants too. And, and the Apostle Paul uh, speaks of the hindrance of Satan in uh, uh, 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 2, verse 18. Satan shifts God's servants. And Luke tells us that uh, Satan had a desire to shift, sift Peter. And the idea of sifting here is that Satan desired to bring trials, temptation, and tribulation to Peter to see if his faith would remain. And that's in Luke 22, 31. And Satan holds the world. Satan is the god of this world and this world system. And this world lies in the hands of an evil, wicked, fallen angel called Satan. And that's in 1 John 5, uh, verse 19, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 4. Um, 
Satan lies and deceives. So the Apostle Paul, I mean John, uh, points out that Satan is, is, among other things, a liar and the father of lies in John 8, uh, verse 44. Satan's power extends to deceiving the whole world in Revelation 12, uh, verse 9. And, and Satan uh, lies to deceive mankind and oppose God's plan. And we can see that in 2 Corinthians 11, verses 13 through 14. Ephesians 4, verse 14, 2 Thessalonians 2, verses 9 through 10, 2 Corinthians 4, verses 3 through 4. Satan controls the fallen angels working against God's plan. Satan has a kingdom. Uh, look at Matthew uh, 12, verse 26. A kingdom must have a king, a ruler, or a prince. A kingdom must have a realm a realm to rule over. And as we see, Satan is called the God of this world. Uh, therefore, Satan is the prince or the ruler or king of this world. And his realm is this world. A kingdom must have one last thing, subjects to rule over. So the subjects of Satan's kingdom are the fallen angels and much of the world as we know it. In the book of Revelation, we see Satan and his angels fighting and eventually being cast out of heaven and that is according to revelation 12 uh, 7 through 9 and again i thank you for listening